this video we are discussing some of the important concepts and properties related to elements and how it changes in a period and group. They are atomic radius, ionic radius, ionization enthalpy, electron gain enthalpy and electronegativity. In the section atomic radius, we can classify atomic radius into two types. There is first one is covalent radius that is related to non-metallic element and the second one is a metallic radius that is related to metals. So, what is the definition of covalent radius? If we consider two atoms bound by a single covalent bond, thus we can say that the distance between them, distance between the, is the total distance and the half of that distance is considered as a covalent radius. That is, by definition, half of the distance between two atoms when they are bound together by single covalent bond in a covalent molecule is called covalent radius. And then if, the, if we consider for example in the case of chlorine molecule, the bond distance of chlorine molecule is 198 picometer. That consider the distance between the two atoms. The distance between the centers of two atoms is 198 picometer and the distance of the covalent radius is equal to the half of that. That is 198 divided by 2 that is 99 picometer. If we consider in the case of metallic radius that is similar but in the case of metal. That is in a crystal we can say that what is metallic radius? Half the internuclear distance between the metal cores in the metal crystal. Here we are considering metal cores in the metal crystal. Half of the distance, half of the distance separating them. That is a metallic radius. And if we consider copper atoms, copper atoms are metal. So the distance between the two copper atoms is 256 picometer. And so we can say the radius is half of it, that is 128 picometer exactly. Discussed what is meant by covalent radius, what is meant by metallic radius, or in general, what is a atomic radius? What is atomic radius? But here we are discussing the trends in periodic table. That means how the atomic size decrease or increase and uh, in a period whether it increase or decrease and in a group whether it increase or decrease and these things are to be discussed in this section. That is, we can say that atomic size decrease across the period. So why is it decreasing across the period? That is because in a period we know that the number of shells remains the same but the number of electrons and protons increases. Thus the effective nuclear charge increases and because of this reason atomic size decrease across the period. And if we, go, if we consider from a group, if we consider from coming down the group we can say that there is there are more shells present. More shells are present and because of that reason shielding effect outweighs. So the nuclear attraction will not be that much effective and that means the size of atom increases as we go down the group. And noble gases are monoatomic gases and they are highly stable atoms. So we can say that their atomic radius is very high compared to other elements. Okay, we learned about atomic radius and its periodic trends. So next we are discussing ionic radius. So what is an ion? If we consider an atom, if it loses an electron, it forms a cation. For example, sodium, it loses an electron, it forms its cation. So in the case of chlorine or fluorine, if it gains an electron, it forms anion. So what about the size when compared to the parent atom? In the case of size of cation, we can say that when an electron is removed from an atom, the number of electrons increase, the electrons decreases while the number of proton remains the same. So the nuclear charge, the attraction will be more and because of that reason, what happens? The size of the atom get decreased. In the case of size of anion, we can say that in the case of anion, one more electron arrives and because of that reason, the nuclear attraction will be less and the size of anion will be larger compared to the parent atom. So we can hear, we can see the examples here. In the case of fluorine, the radius of fluorine atom is 64 picometer. While in the case of ionic radius of fluoride ionus, 136 picometer. One more electron arises. And because of that reason, the size of the anion increases. And in the case of sodium atom, it is 186 picometer. When an electron is lost, it forms Na plus ion. Then the size also decreases, that is 95 picometer. Next is, what is meant by isoelectronic species? As this name itself suggests, that is the number of electrons present will be same. And atoms and ions which have same number of electrons are called isoelectronic species. 
Okay, the examples are O2 minus. Oxygen has 8 electrons. So if it gains 2 more electrons, it forms O2 minus. And in the case of F, it will be have 9 electrons. And F minus 10 electrons. And sodium, 11 electrons. If it lose 1 electron, it will form Na plus, that is 10 electrons. And for Mg, that will be 12 electrons. And if it lose 2 electrons, that will be Mg2 plus. And we know that one thing, that is the cation with a greater positive charge will have smaller radius. That means if we consider them, we can say that the smaller one will be Mg2 plus. Because it will have the greater positive charge. Because it has greater positive charge, it will have smaller radius. And anion with a greater negative charge will have larger radius. Here, O2 minus. 2 minus is the largest negative charge. So, it will have the largest radius. Even though they are isoelectronic species, the radius differs and it is in that order. Next is one of the important topic. That is ionization enthalpy. What does that term suggest? Ionization enthalpy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an isolated gaseous atom in the ground state. That is the energy required to remove an electron from an isolated gaseous atom in the ground state. If you consider an atom, an isolated gaseous atom, the energy which is required to remove an electron from its from its shell is called from its valence shell is called ionization enthalpy. And for example, in the case of it is depicted like this way. That is, for example, an element X. It loses one electron to form X plus. And again, if it want to one, lose one more electron, that will be known as second ionization enthalpy. That is X plus loses one more electron to form X2 plus. Ionization enthalpy is the amount of energy required. So it will be always positive. If the amount of energy is released, it is will be it will be negative, and if it is acquired it will be positive. Second ionization enthalpy is always higher than the first ionization enthalpy. So why is it like that? Because if we consider second ionization enthalpy, it will be the next electron has to be removed from the, its cation. That means that the attraction in the case of cation or the size of the cation will be smaller than the parent atom. So it will be difficult to remove an electron from the plus atom, from the cation. So if you consider which elements or which uh, group elements will have the maximum value and minimum value, we can say that noble gas will have maximum value because it, uh, it do not want to remove an electron. So it will be very difficult to remove or high amount of energy, high amount of energy has to be supplied to remove an electron. And in the case of alkali metals, it has to remove one electron to gain noble gas configuration. So the amount of energy which should be provided to the alkali metals will be very less. So it will be minimum. So we already learned about ionization enthalpy. So how is it changing in a period and in a group? If we consider the period, as we move from left side to right side, that is from metals to non-metals, the ionization enthalpy increases. Why is it happening like that? Because as we move from left side to right side, we know that atomic size decreases. That is the nuclear charge outweighs the shielding. And because of this reason, the atom will be very small and the amount of energy required to remove an electron will be more required. The amount of energy required to remove the electron will be more. Okay, as we move from top to down in a group, we can say that ionization enthalpy decreases. That means as we, as we move from top to down, the number of shells increases. Okay, as the number of shells increases, what happens? that will be more effective that means the shielding will be more effective there and shielding outweighs the increase in nuclear charge so ionization enthalpy decreases as we move down the group but still there are some exceptions in the case of boron we can say that uh, the configuration of boron is 1s2 2s2 2p1 and the configuration of beryllium is 1s2 2s2 so according to this theory ionization enthalpy increases across the period Ionization enthalpy should be more for boron compared to beryllium. But the ionization enthalpy is actually a little bit less compared to beryllium. So why is it happening? We know that in the case of boron 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. That indicates last electron enters into p subshell, p orbital. And in the case of beryllium 1s2, 2s2. That means the last electron enters into s orbital. 
So when it enters to S orbital, there is a speciality that is S orbital have more penetrating power compared to P orbital. So it will be more difficult to remove the electron from that atom. Moreover, the beryllium is fully filled there. So we can say that that is the reason why the ionization enthalpy of boron is slightly less than that of beryllium. In the case of oxygen and nitrogen, the first ionization enthalpy of oxygen is less than that of nitrogen. So why is it like that? In the case of oxygen, we can say that the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. In the case of nitrogen, that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. That means that all the p orbitals, 3p orbitals, that is px, py and pz are, full, are filled in the case of nitrogen atom. But in the case of oxygen, all the three are two are half filled and one is fully filled. So there will be repulsion in that orbital and because of that reason, the energy required to remove an electron from oxygen is less compared to that of nitrogen. Next is electron gain enthalpy. So what is an electron gain enthalpy? As the name suggests, that is amount of energy term that is related to gaining of an electron. So we can say that by definition, the measure of the ease with which an atom adds an electron to form an anion. How easily an electron, how easily an atom can accept an electron or receive an electron to form an anion. That is electron gain enthalpy. So for many electrons, electron gain enthalpy is negative. So why is it like that? The amount of energy is released in the case of electron gain enthalpy. That means while accepting an electron, an amount of energy is released. So that is known as electron gain enthalpy. And we can say that for many electron elements, electron gain enthalpy is negative. In the case of noble gas, they are highly stable. So in order to uh, involve, in order to accept an electron, it does not need an electron to be accepted. It not, does not need an electron. So we can say that it have large positive electron gain enthalpy. If you can say that electron gain enthalpy becomes more and more negative as you move from left to right, that is across the period. So the chlorine, bromine, all these elements have the highest negative value in the case of electron gain enthalpy. And as you move from top to down in a group, we can say that electron gain enthalpy value will be less negative. That will be more in the top and less will be in the negative, less will be in the down part. Oxygen and fluorine are considered to be the highly highly in the right hand side of the right side of the periodic table. So it has to be negative. It, ha it has to be highly negative, but actually it is less negative compared to sulfur and chlorine. Why is it like that? Because in the case of oxygen and fluorine, they are very small elements. That means the last electron gets filled in the p orbital, that means 2p orbital. And for example, in the case of chlorine, it will be in the 3p orbital, so there will be no problem. But in the case of oxygen and chlorine, it get into the 2p orbital. There will be highly repulsion. There will be high repulsion. There will be repulsive in nature. So we can say that there is an exception in the case of oxygen and fluorine that will be less negative related to sulfur and chlorine. What is meant by electronegativity? The electron gain enthalpy and electronegativity are highly related terms but quite different from each other. Both are related to gaining of electron or but in the case of electronegativity that is the ability of an atom in a chemical compound to attract shared electrons to itself. This is the ability to attract while that is in the case of electron gain enthalpy that is the ability to accept an electron. Here we can say that the, it, it is to attract shared electrons to itself in a bond in order to share in order to attract the shared electrons to itself so it is known as electronegativity it can be measured using different scales that is polling scale mulligan jeffrey scale alfred rochow scale etc in the case of polling scale we can see that this is the most widely seen and the value of fluorine in the case of this scale is 4 and if we consider electronegativity we know that as we move from left to right the ability to accept ability to uh, ability to attract the shared electrons will be more so it increases across the period and decreases down the group. Electronegativity is directly related to non-metallic properties. We know that as we move from left to right the electronegativity increases. So just like uh, as we move from left to right non-metallic properties also increases. So we can say that they are directly related to each other.